what you need in the building. How's everybody doing? Um, you know, the Jamal Herring versus Jonathan Aquendo fight. I want to talk about it a little bit. Again, my opinion may not be a popular one. Because, once again, I'm not one of those guys that just rides what a commentator, a commentator says. Let's talk about the fight first. So, Jonathan Aquendo, I thought in the first and half of the second round, was doing some good body work. He actually was, they said he wasn't using his jab, but he was leading with his right hand. And I told you guys about the right hand lead, and they obviously did not pay attention to that. Now, Jamal Herring, though, on the other hand, was meeting him with some nice, good inside work. He was working some nice little hooks to the body on the inside and ripping some uppercuts to the head. And they were kind of doing that thing on the inside. But from round three, all was actually the middle part of round two. Jamal Heron basically took over the fight and Akenda wasn't really doing much good work. He was, he was, he started off doing some good body work, leading with right hands. You know, of course, Herring was the better jabber. And then Herring set up that uppercut that knocked down Kendo in round, I believe it was three. Uh, he was, you know, pivoting very nicely to the side and catching him with those uppercuts. And he was also using the jab. Uh, and he was also using the lead left. So he was using the jab lead left. He even used a couple check hooks. He used um, a little hook. You could see he was warming up. You could see that he hadn't fought in a while. A Kendo... In round five, led with his head. And why this was called an intentional headbutt was because he didn't even, he wasn't even freaking landing a punch. You know, like a punch didn't even come after it. He shifted his position and he came in with his head. <laughs> Just simply came in with his head. There was no punches thrown. He didn't angle himself like he was going to throw a punch. And so as a result of that, it was an intentional headbutt. And he was doing it most of the night, rubbing his head and Jamal Herring's um, face a lot. And so anyway, the fight was stopped in round eight. At the end of round eight, uh, Jamal Herring was heading to his corner saying he couldn't see because the blood was going into his eye. He had two cuts over his right eye. And those two cuts were bleeding into his eye. So he was saying he couldn't see. And they cleared it out and stuff. And this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Because he said he couldn't see, and his corner burner, um, uh, BMAC, said, you know, well, he can't see. Hey, they were going to stop the fight right there. Now, because it was an intentional headbutt that, uh, uh, I forgot what the, the, the referee's name is, that he, he called it in as an intentional headbutt, because of that, uh, Jamal Herring won the fight. Okay, if it was an unintentional hair headbutt, it would have gone to the scorecards. Even though Jamal Herring said he couldn't see much later on in the fight, the eighth round, the headbutt was in the fifth. The fight stopped in the eighth. Now to this, um, there was commentary on the fight. I wasn't really paying much attention to it, but I did pick up some things that Timothy Bradley was saying, some things that Andrew Ward was saying. The way I Andrew War scored the first round of the fight, I had Aquendo winning the first round, despite what everybody else was saying. The second round, I also could edge it to Aquendo, but after that, really, Aquendo won not a single round after that. He was very, um, he was just ineffective, okay? Uh, Jamal Herring was hitting him with uh, left uppercuts and Straight lefts, lefts to the body, jabs, uh, check hooks. But in the process, they were also coming on the inside and clashing heads. But besides clashing heads, they were also fighting on the inside at times. So Timothy Bradley was talking about how Kendall was with leading with his head. was It was a problem for Jamal Herring. I didn't really see that. What I was seeing was Jamal Herring, because his eye got damaged, when, when Kendall came up into Jamal Herring's head and rubbed his head into his eye, you know, Jamal Herring would have a problem. And Jamal Herring tried to change levels to, to avoid that or even keep Akendo's head down. Well, it wasn't really working. But uh, as to Jamal Herring making it to 12 rounds, I really didn't see a problem with that. I think he could have done it if he could see. And he was just saying at the time that he couldn't see. He didn't say he wanted the fight stopped. 
you know, they were talking about how he's quitting and he wanted a way out. And I listened to all the fans because Timothy Bradley said this. Tim Bradley's the guy that said it. Because um, Andre Ward sort of repeated that, uh, everybody's going in on Jamal Herring. Now, this is the weird thing about him. I got to say this. The first thing I realized is this was Jamal Herring. Everybody said was not a quitter. He's a guy that keeps on going. He keeps on doing what he needs to do. And um, he was considered a very uh, consistent, determined guy. All of a sudden, he's a quitter because he says he can't see in his eye. And I just don't understand the fans. They're very fickle. Fans who are talking like this, they're out of their damn mind. And, and, and so I listen to these fans who are saying, oh, you quit and you quit. And I'm like, quit how? How did he quit? Explain. So if a guy can't see in his eye because his blood is dripping in his eye, and you know, this is the weird thing about fans. One fight, they're going to say, oh, this guy had a bad cut over his eye and the blood's going in the eye. If the blood wasn't going in the eye, it's not an issue. The blood's going in his eye. And he's saying he can't see because of that. Okay? So he said that. Now, does that mean that the fight should be stopped because of that? That's up to Tony Weeks. Tony Weeks decided to take it to the people and say it was a disqualification. That was not cool for Quendo because Quendo is still fighting. So I can understand the, the how people feel about that. But that's not, he, he didn't bail out. He said he couldn't see in his eye. I mean, I can't understand how. So, of course, what does this mean for the Cal Frampton fight? Well, what it shows me is that um, you got to get off the ring rust for starters. And so um, that's one of the things Jamal Heron looks like. Carl Frampton's a very, very high quality kind of fighter, a boxer. So it'd be interesting how a Carl Frampton Jamal Herring fight would uh, phase out. But again, I really don't see, I see it as a sort of a learning experience, even though Jamal Herring said he also fought another fighter at uh, super welterweight, I think it was, or lightweight, one of them, I think it was lightweight. He fought uh, a fighter at, at lightweight um, with. Uh, one eye. He did it before. And he went all the way to the finish line. So this is not the first time this has happened to him. But he just mentioned that he couldn't see in his eye. Which makes sense. I don't know if it's uh, if it's Mr. McIntyre who said suggested to the referee he can't see in his eye. We shouldn't continue. Or if it was Herring who suggested because he couldn't see in his eye you couldn't continue. But I don't think that's the case, I think, is just that he couldn't see in his eye, which at the time they 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 called the a fight. Okay, now I just want to say one more thing because I'm getting all these. I see all this anti-boxer sentiment out here by fans, and I don't understand it really. I don't understand why fans were ripping. And I can understand you saying, "Well, I think Kyle Frampton could beat him if this is the way he's doing." You know, um, I don't know if that really is an indicator that Kyle Frampton could beat him. But what it does tell us is, and I do believe Kyle Frampton is an orthodox fighter and Jamal Harris is a southpaw. What it does tell me is that um, it should be interesting to see how Jamal Harris will respond to Kyle Frampton. Kyle Frampton knocked out his opponent. His opponent wasn't a top contender or anything, but... He knocked out his opponent, and that was at lightweight. He went up to lightweight to do that. Whereas Jamal Herring, he um, had to stop. The fight was stopped because of a cut over his eye from his opponent who kept on coming in with his head. Now, me personally thinking about it, I would say that, of course, Carl Frampton looked better in his fight than Jamal Herring, crisper, sharper. Uh, but Herring had to put off this fight three times because of COVID-19. Same opponent, but he had to put off the fight three times. And so I think that has something to do with it in some way, shape, or form. I don't know exactly how. He looked like he overtrained. But I may be wrong. But what I do know is that I don't see him, you know, cupping out or quitting on a, a kendo. I think his eye was a problem, and he expressed it. And that's just the way how it looks to me. Because I didn't see a Quendo really giving him any problems except for his head, coming in with his head. He had to look out for that. And I hope Jamal Herring, from this experience, will learn how to control a fighter who's coming in with their heads. There's certain things you can do. 
to prevent them from butting you with their heads, going low to high. So I hope he takes those necessary precautions to be able to deal with a situation like that for somebody who comes in head first, especially. So you don't get hit in your head because now, here's the interesting thing, he's going to have scar tissue from the cuts over his right eye. So, you know, I'm just thinking about that. And Kyle Frampton can use that as a target if he can get to there. So those are some of the things that uh, sometimes happen as a fortunate incident of a fight that you have with a fighter who leads with their head. So that's my two cents on everything. Hopefully we'll see how things pan out with the rest of uh, fights that happen in this month. But until then, I'm what you need. Peace.